Before Andrew Thompson was old enough to drink, he earned about $2 million building a MySpace site. The term was whoring. You'd do whore trains, you would do whoring. I was doing 400 a day, depending on how many whores I can get to whore me. <laughs> I added Yahoo that night and it said $2,500 in less than 12 hours. There's no freaking way I just made $2,500 in six hours. Yeah, MySpace didn't like that either. They sent me a cease and desist. I was a high authority. Google loved me. I was first place for the most competitive term in the industry. It was bringing me probably 60,000 visits a day. Instantaneously, I think I was page eight. I was like, where the f am I? I basically started from scratch and having no trust, no authority. My stomach hurts as I hear this. So I lost everything overnight. Hey everyone, it's Andrew Warner, founder of Mixergy.com, home of the ambitious upstart and one of the great things about the work that I do here on Mixergy is I get to find out stories of people that I never would have discovered otherwise because there's really no magazine covering this, these kinds of stories. There's really no television station that's covering ambitious stories, ambitious entrepreneurs like the conversations that I get to have here. And one of the people who I got to meet because of Mixergy is a guy who, before he was old enough to drink, and Andrew, correct me if this is untrue, but before Andrew Thompson was old enough to drink, he earned about $2 million building a uh, a MySpace site, a site that helped people who were on MySpace. He, he earned it quickly and then he lost it just as quickly and we're going to find out how he earned it and I want to learn a lot from that. We're going to find out how you lost it and that's going to be a reminder to all of us entrepreneurs how to keep what we're building and then at the, the end we're going to find out what you're doing to regain it again because you've got all this experience, it's not going to waste, you're going to fight back in with a new business. The big website, Andrew, that I understand that you built up is called MySpaceSupport.com. That was a site? Yeah, I had a, I had a few large ones actually, MySpace Support being the biggest. Um, I had MySpace City, I had my Tower Codes, and a few other little ones, but those were the three big ones. And what but MySpace Support, doing? as simple as it sounds, it gave users layouts, codes, generators to do all kinds of fancy things and glitter graphics for the girls. So, oh, I used to see those glitter graphics on yeah. MySpace all the time. I hated them. It would just be yeah, so like, overpowering. Yes, they were annoying. We're going to get into the details of how you did it, but can you tell me broadly where the money came from? You weren't charging a membership or anything, were you? No, it was strictly CPM advertising only, or CPC and CPM. It was a mixture of those two forms of advertising. CPC means cost per click. Every time somebody clicks, you earn money. CPM means uh, cost per impression, and you earn money every time your ads were shown. All right, let's yes. go. Yes. Let's go back to the first business. And how old were you when you launched it? I did Photoshop websites. Photoshop what does that mean? Website. I saw that in your profile and I don't understand what Photoshop websites are. Um, a long time ago, like when I was 16, I used to build websites teaching people how to use Photoshop. Quick tutorials on how to do filters and how to do effects and how to do fancy text effects. And my buddy and I, we'd go around submitting tutorials to big database sites. So we'd build a whole bunch of tutorials, submit them everywhere we can, and then we'd have Google ads. And on good days, we pull up to 150 bucks. I mean, once we get approved, I mean, from the tutorial database sites, we'd get a whole bunch of traffic, and that's where I started. What kind of tutorials? You mean text tutorials, images, where they're videos? This was a little while ago, so there was no screen capturing software that I was aware of, so it was all text tutorials and pictures, how to do something in Photoshop. So you just say, this is a feature that you guys all need to know about. I'm gonna describe it with text. I'm gonna show you images so you understand understand it and then you submitted those to databases what kind of databases for example the biggest one being good hyphen tutorials.com you'd go to places like those and they just those places link to other people and you just submit your tutorial there and they send you thousands of hits a day hits to your website or were yes. the tutorials housed on their site nope it was a direct link to your website wow and how did they know who had quality content and who didn't you'd have to be approved the tutorial does have to be approved some of them would be declined has to be approved yes okay. by a moderate and that, that's where I started with the uh, whole internet advertising thing. Okay, and then you just threw up some ads from Google and that's where you were bringing in your revenue. Yep, Okay. That's exactly right. And I think one of those sites was idesignthis.com, a tutorial site? Yes, that was one of my bigger ones I did pretty good with. Okay. And then I ended up selling. Go ahead. Were you getting traffic to that site beyond the databases? Were you starting to get some Google traffic, Yahoo traffic, that kind of yeah, thing? Yeah, naturally the SEO would build up for um, certain keywords, but the majority of traffic was from referrals, refer referring sites. And I mean, we would submit to a lot of database sites. So, I mean, traffic was really consistent because 
we would keep submitting tutorials daily, just constantly. I mean, we were busting our ass just making tutorials on how to use Photoshop. So it kept coming from them. Okay, and I teased this interview and the people, we've got tons of people who are watching us right now. Tons anyway for me, this isn't like CNBC levels, but it's a good number of people who are watching us. And one of the reasons they're watching us is because I kept saying that you're a guy who earned about $2 million before you were old enough to drink. And we're gonna get into the big dollars and we're gonna get into the way that you lived hard. But in fact, more important for me and my work here on Mixergy is to talk about how you worked hard. And I know you said this over and over and the people who I've talked to about you have told me this about you, that you worked your butt off. You, It wasn't easy. It wasn't just like you landed on a trick and everything fell into place and money was rolling in your pocket. So I wanna take it slowly. And if you're waiting for the big payoff guys, who, if you're watching us live or listening to us recorded, wait for it, it'll happen. Happen. So you were saying that you sold iDesignThis.com for how much? It was so long ago, but I think it was 25, it was 2000 or 2500 and I sold that on SitePoint and I just recently found out about SitePoint, you know, I wanted to get out of the Photoshop thing, this is when the MySpace thing was coming and that was my first big like chunk of change at a time. I mean, here and there I would do good days on Google advertising, Photoshop tutorials, 100 bucks a day, but 20 bucks a day average, you know, it just, it, all, it always varied. But when I sold that, it was like $2,000 just cash and I was just amazed. And I was 17, I think, when I did that. So that was a lot of money for me, especially for a high school dropout. Did you use that to validate dropping out of high school? Did you show it off to your parents and say, look, I was right? Yeah, I, to my parents, yes. My parents did not like the idea of dropping out at all but um yeah I, uh, a, a few reasons the main reasons being i really hated doing stuff i didn't want to do i always sat on the computer always i was always on the internet i couldn't stand doing anything but being on the internet i was the biggest nerd there was in school and the drive the drive the drive every single morning waking up at 5 30 and then driving a half an hour to get to school I see. I thought you were going to say the drive to make it big. You mean the actual commute drive. Yeah, that's that's how lazy I am. I didn't like the drive in the morning. All right. Uh, I've heard all kinds of reasons for starting a business. That's interesting. Okay, so you oh, made... Oh, and sorry, uh -huh. I forgot to mention, I wanted to keep doing the internet stuff with my buddy, Mike. So those are the three main reasons. We wanted to do the internet thing full time, the drive, and I hated school. Were you guys partners on any of these sites? Yeah, him and I verbally were partners on every website up until MySpace support. That's when I kind of went solo because I did everything my to an extent myself. Okay, should I move on now to MySpaceSupport.com or was there another major business before then? Another no, milestone? No, not no. really. Just jumped right into that one. Okay, all right, so then you launch MySpace support. What did you want that site to be at first? I was a MySpace addict. Always wanted to build my image. Always wanted to have the coolest layout. Always wanted to impress the girls. I was all about image on MySpace. You know, I would look around for backgrounds. I'd look around for generators myself to, you know, just look around for stuff. And then I came across a profile editor. I just like building websites. I said I could build something better. And that's when another friend of mine, Curtis, he designed the first version of MySpace support. And that's when I started programming my ass off. I don't think I've ever programmed so hard in my entire life that I did on this site. But by was... programming, do you mean actual programming, coding up the generators, or are you talking yeah, about yeah, just yeah. designing the layouts? No, I'm talking yeah, I'm talking PHP and MySQL, because the site was database driven to an extent. I mean, there was stuff that had to be pulled from a database. I did have a community in there, so uh, eventually, you know, I started progressing. The generators would get intense a little, and I'd have to do some JavaScript. You know, as MySpace grew, the generators got a little more intense. You had to do more programming. That's what I used to do. I, after I made my money, I completely stopped, but I programmed PHP, JavaScript, all that for day and night, going through 12 packs of soda every single day for three months. All right, that's what the internet is built on, soda drinkers. Okay, so you built this thing with the idea that you were gonna make money the same way that you made money with iDesignThis.com by throwing up ads from Google, right? Yes, And Google exactly. ads, you just have to go in and you have to fill out a form and you have the code that you can put on your site and they send you a check whenever they, I yep. think it was every other month back then? Yeah, it was net 30, so after the end of the calendar month, whatever, you know, they'd, you'd get a check 30 days later. All right, and didn't you have to be old enough to cash checks to work with them? to? sign a contract? I mean, you were under 18. Actually, I went through quite a few Google accounts, but no, there was no, no, there was no age requirement. Why'd you go through quite a bit? Why'd you go through a few Google uh, accounts? I got actually kicked off of my first Google account for displaying irrelevant ads on certain pages. And I guess they didn't like that. 
But then uh, my buddy got a Google account and he lost his Google account and ended up having to use my mom's Google account. I went through like four Google accounts. I mean, it was a train, it was a roller coaster. I mean, and the one so, that you settled on, yeah, sorry, you, you go ahead. What were you going to say? I was going to ask the one that you settled on, who owned that Google account? My friend Wes, actually, and he still owns that Google account to this day. I'm not going to use Google. I'm a CPM guy now, but uh, every time we got checks, him and I had to go to the CPA and it was really funny, you know, make pass the money over to me. And In this case, so, the CPA means the certified public account, the accountant. We're not talking yes. about a new revenue model. Yeah, when money started coming in. All right, so you've, you've got your site. You've got your ads. How are you getting traffic to it? MySpace was big, what, three years ago, four years ago? When I started it and then a year through it, it was a, a lot different. You know, there was no Twitter, there was no Facebook. Social networking hasn't even really boomed yet. So back then I was into building my image and the way to build image on MySpace four years ago was to have a lot of friends. Remember when Forbidden and Tila Tequila had a whole bunch of friends? Everybody was in a competition with them to try to get as much friends as them. The term was whoring. Back in the day, you'd do whore trains, you would do whoring. Basically, you'd post bulletins saying, add this person, add this person. You would get a whole bunch of people to basically post bulletins saying to add me, for example. And I would go to 5,000 friends, 10,000. And then once you break a barrier of like 10, 20,000 friends is when you get in the, the cool zone, the popular zone with all the MySpace whores. And we're talking like, I was in whore chat rooms with people who had 50,000 friends, 100,000 friends, 60,000 friends. Forbidden was in a few of those chat rooms sometimes and a few other big people. Chris Crocker was in a chat room with me one time doing whoring back when MySpace was big. And us whores with 20, 30,000 friends, we'd say, hey, post a bulletin for me. And we'd all post bulletins for each other, getting us more friends, which is what led me to the idea of, okay, why don't I have all oh, these hang whores? Hang on a second, before, okay, oh. before we continue from that, I, I wanna make sure that I understand this part. Okay. Back then, when you sent a bulletin, that would go into people's inboxes, right? So all these people who are following one of the whores would get an email saying, follow this other whore, or be friends with this other whore. And yeah. a significant number of them would just go and be friends because they wanted to be friended back exactly and it, it's not even an inbox a bulletin is a if you're friends with them you're gonna have a list of bulletins and you'll see it like right on your main page you'll see so and so posted a bulletin they would click the bulletin and surprisingly enough they would add you even if they don't know you just because they wanted friends because they wanted friends because they were kind of doing what you were doing to a smaller degree and because mm -hmm. you guys looked good in your pictures and they wanted to have good looking friends to impress the friends in their high schools and colleges. And having lots of friends meant, you know, you look cool on MySpace. That's really what it was all about. And then you had having your own little club where you guys would talk to each other and you threw out a couple of names. I, I know Tila, Te uh, Tila Tequila, of course, but who's forbidden? I'm surprised you don't know forbidden. I think she got bigger first and then Tila just took off just out of nowhere with her whatever lesbian show but forbidden was like the first on myspace to reach a million friends before teela tequila i could be wrong but forbidden was just another huge whore and i mean i'm not saying that in a derogatory way i mean like myspace whore so. right and you guys would just stay up all night and you would friend each other then you would pimp each other out and you would just keep building up your audience and at first it was just for ego it was purely for ego and image. Okay, and then you were you were starting to say that you realized something. What was that realization? I, re I started to get really cool with all these people. I had a bunch of friends. So I would start saying, hey, post bulletins for my website. Generators, cool layouts, cool graphics, and I would have to pay them. I think I paid them, God, 50 bucks a, a, a week or 50 bucks uh, every, so depending on how many friends they have, I would you know start dipping into my own cash. These bulletins worked like wildfire. I mean, I had like five or ten whores who would post bulletins every so often from here every day, including myself, twice a day, whatever, send me thousands of hits. Thousands. And they would all and say, go check out myspacesupport.com because that's where you can get new layouts, you could get these uh, bejeweled text for, for, your, mm. for your site, and everyone will think that you're cool. Yep. Okay, and all that was coming over to your site and you were making money from advertising from Google. And once I started doing the whoring, it started picking up and then I uh, naturally started uh, growing with SEO as well and other stuff I'll tell you in a little bit, but the whoring is really kind of what gave me that initial kick, so to speak, that really got me going. 
All right, so now you're making money through Google, and then there was a turning point that I read on your site about Yahoo. Can you tell people about that? Okay, this is kind of where things started to change. Google, I started doing pretty good. I mean, yeah, I was making money is pretty good. I was doing a hundred to four hundred a day, depending on how many whores I can get to for me. <laughs> I know that sounds funny, but and then you know over time, like in a month, I mean, it just kind of started picking up. But I was doing up to four hundred, five hundred dollars a day on Google. I haven't even added CP. CPM banners yet too. I didn't even know. I don't even think I was too familiar with CPM at this point. But um, Yahoo just launched their advertising program. It was in beta actually, and certain people got invited or whatever. And I was one of the beta customers. I got an invite. I don't remember how I got it, but I did. Yahoo updates every hour. It updates every hour with stats and stuff. And I, I think I was doing like 500 bucks a day almost at this point. I don't remember exactly which night, but my friend Mike was over, my really close friend, and I added Yahoo that night, that evening, out of nowhere. I checked at like midnight or whatever with my buddy, and it said $2,500 or something, $2,500 in less than 12 hours. Of course, I didn't believe it at first. I was so skeptical, and I didn't even know what to think. I was like, there's no freaking way I just made $2,500 in six hours. That was the turning point. That's where the money started coming, and Yahoo was real. It, and Why did Yahoo bring in more money for you than Google? I thought Google was the giant in the space. This is what happened with the Google Yahoo thing, and Yahoo started nailing down hard. Yahoo didn't have as many advertisers like Google did at first. Google actually had relevant contextual ads that were displayed on your site, you know, like ringtones and graphics and HTML and, you know, all those relevant ads that aren't as high paying. So I'd get thousands of relevant clicks on Google and making 500 bucks a day. Yahoo, I would get hundreds of clicks a day, but the ads weren't as relevant. They're more like education, get your degree, get, you know what I mean? They're, they're higher paying ads. So Yahoo was displaying less relevant, higher paying. Fair to say, because Yahoo was whoring themselves, because they were going to reduce the value of their ads for their users and your users in return for bringing in more money, for running those high paying offers that aren't necessarily relevant. Yeah, they and I mean, they, they really had no choice at that point either. They needed a high traffic websites and they didn't have they didn't have as many advertisers, you know, and I mean, so we pushed out what they had. They had a, a select amount of categories that we could push and we pushed the most relevant, which was I would push education ads, you know, because that seemed like more kids were on MySpace. So I used education ads. It paid off surprisingly well. Wow. All right. Do you remember how much you made at the height per month? What was your highest monthly revenue? 200. 15,000, 214,000. Okay, so over 200,000 in a month. Yeah, in a month. And you, did you have to share this with Mike or anyone else? No, nobody helped with the site at all except for my buddy who did the initial design for me and uh, came up with the domain name. But I did all the work, all the, the programming. So I, I mean, I paid him very well. I didn't split it with anybody. I did have a partner in Canada, however, who was using my Yahoo account. So he had his own website. So out of that 214, I think like every month I'd have to give him 30,000 of it. So because I he was I, using your account to run mm -hmm. ads for himself. He was in Canada and Yahoo wasn't allowing Canadian exactly. uh, affiliates. Myspa yeah. MySpaceSupport.com, the intention behind that was to have a site that would almost, that would make people think that it's owned by MySpace, that MySpace offers support yeah. on this site, right? Yeah, MySpace didn't like that either. Why didn't they stop you? They tried. They sent me a cease and desist and they threatened to sue me. Cease and desist, you know, you don't do this, we're gonna come after you. At first I didn't take it too heavy or whatever, but then they came at me again. And then I had a buddy at Photo Bucket who said he knew somebody at MySpace and he got in touch with them. And then they just said, hey, add this to your footer. It was actually, Went from a cease and desist to them being super nice, saying, "Okay, fine, we'll let it slide." Who's the buddy? His name was Peter. Peter, Peter Pham. Pham. Of course, yeah, he Peter. has buddies everywhere. Why did yeah. Peter Pham? He he did an interview with me here on Mixergy about how he has all these buddies everywhere. Yeah. Um, Why did Peter Pham want to help you out? At the time, I was the largest MySpace site at one point in time, and when he was working for Photobucket, I don't know what he's doing now. I haven't talked to him in years. Mm -hmm. He wanted to do some type of a partnership, Photobucket with MySpace support, some type of link trade, you know, where we kind of help each other out. Never ended up going through, but him and I were MSN buddies for quite some time. He ended up, you know, he's like, okay, let me talk to somebody at MySpace. Let me see what I can do, basically. And he helped me get out of that. That guy has got more connections than anybody that I've ever seen. 
I'll yeah. tell you what he's doing right now. Now he's the founder of Bill Shrink. Do you know Bill Shrink? Yeah, is that, is that website that helps you uh, find a better deal on cell phones? Exactly, or... brand new site. Everyone knows what they are because he made a deal with T-Mobile somehow, where T-Mobile was running ads for him for free essentially with Catherine Zeta-Jones. You talk about connections and the power of connections, it helped you just to be close to this guy. Can you imagine the effect that his contacts have on his own business? I did an interview with him before, I think before he launched that business, back when he was just a guy who was a big connector in Los Angeles. He helps you out with them, you keep going strong, you, you at your height make 200000 in a month, and it's basically yours. Before we get into expenses and all the business stuff, let's now spend a little bit of time on, on the celebration. What's the first big thing that you bought for yourself? Oh, man. I say everywhere when I got my first $100,000 check, but I think my first check was 180. I went and bought a brand new BMW in cash. $49,000 after taxes, 330XI. Got my first check in January. I bought the car in February. I can't even explain how it felt. I just went and bought a brand new $50,000 BMW. That was the first thing I bought. Why didn't you take out a loan? Was it to be a big shot? Was it because you couldn't because you were too young? I don't know. I think because I thought, I thought in my head if I had it paid off in cash, I would never have to worry about it again. But now I wish I would have bought a used car, financed it, or done some type of lease option where, you know, like trade that car back in three years later and get a different one. You know, like, I don't know. I should have been smarter and not just dropped $50,000, but that's what I Let's did. Let's come back to that. I, I've got to remember to come back to that. What else did you spend money on? The next month, March 10th, I closed on my house, $93,000 down cash after closing costs. What kind of house was it? The one I'm in now. It's oh, okay. A, uh, so you bought this and you still have it, so you didn't lose it all. Well, I'm working on saving it, but I mean, I'm, I'm at, a, I'm at a, a point where I'm in a little rut, but I'm getting back up and everything's going to be fine. I still have this little baby, four bedroom, finished basement. All right. Let me, all I'll tell you this. Before we continue here, I, I want to just tell you that just about every interview with a successful entrepreneur who I've had on here, they've had a big setback. Everybody has setbacks. The difference between them and, and everyone else is that they get up and they go build another business. Most people would say, this is ridiculous. Obviously, entrepreneurship is too risky. I'll go get a job. I'll have this interesting background and, and life will go on. But the guys who come on here, the entrepreneurs who built up incredible businesses say, no, I, I'm going to do it again. If I could do it once, I could do it again. All right. What else did you buy? You bought the house? You bought the BMW? Man, I splooged. I took my girlfriend straight to Hawaii. We went to Vegas. I wasn't even 21. I bought her so much stuff. It was ludicrous. I bought another BMW, $120,000 cash, a truck, $40,000 cash. I, I have the list written down, but um, you know, I kind of went a little crazy. I didn't do alcohol, I didn't do drugs, I've never done any of that stuff. Barely ever drank. I just loved toys. I spent tons of money on clothes, jewelry, and there's probably some big stuff I'm missing, but oh, my house. I spent way too much money in this house. I upgraded this thing probably 200000 ish dollars in cash of renovations. I now have the most expensive non-selling house in this neighborhood. Yeah, I went a little crazy. You said earlier, actually, that you were a nerd in high school. I've said that a lot about myself here. I was a big freaking nerd loser, didn't have anything going on for himself, just couldn't wait to leave school so that I could get on with the, with the beginning of my life. It sounds like that's what your experience was. Yeah. How old were you when you quit? Actually, last semester of senior year, 17. How much of this drive came from the fact that you had some kind of burning desire to succeed in the world. School wasn't giving it to you. You weren't getting it back from the high school girls. And here you found an opportunity in coding up a business and you weren't gonna let it go. You weren't going to go to sleep if there was some kind of Diet Coke that could have kept you going or Red Bull. How much of that is true? I've always had drive. Always. And all I've ever wanted to do was build a business since middle school. I don't know why. Nobody I know around me has ever built a business. My mom's worked full time. I just always have wanted to build something. And it was the internet. I mean, I've always wanted to make money off the internet ever since I found out you could. I mean, I found out you can start making money probably, I don't remember which year, junior year. And then I started doing the Photoshop stuff. Ever since then, that's all I've been going for. Just constantly working on that. I've always been driven to make money. I always wanted to be a millionaire. Then you decide that you're gonna make a change to the site. Why did you want to change the site? Well, this was my first attempt at it. Out of all the money that I have blown to invest a little money back into the site and uh, keep up with the times. MySpace was changing, new generators were needed. I wanted to give it a facelift, you know, because I, I like building websites. I mean, I enjoy it, so I like 
changing the interface. I like making things friendlier. I mean, I enjoy building websites. So me and my buddy, we said, hey, let's do this. I hired a programmer to do the entire framework from scratch and mod rewrite the URLs, make the URLs completely different. Flew to Miami, did some touch-ups, fixed a whole bunch of stuff. And the reason we flew to Miami is because my partner in Chicago, or a friend in Chicago, not partner, I hired two friends in Chicago of mine to finish up, basically. We flew to Miami, launched, finished the site in like a week. We we're out there for a while. We had It was a ton of fun. And then um, launched the new version of MySpace support. Okay, before you say that you launched it, let me ask some geek questions here. What language did you develop the site in? Uh, it's always been PHP. It's always but, been um, PHP? Uh -huh, but What we went from was the standard procedural OP, uh, PHP, which is a if-then-else statements, you know, like if, then, do, while, loops, you know, stuff like that. We went from that to a object-oriented mm -hmm. view of it which is, you know, classes and objects and then functions and methods and all that stuff. So we went to a more complex, sophisticated type of programming so that we could uh, then add features later, have a more sophisticated community and just tidy up the code. That So we went from that to that. And what's this, what were you trying to do to the URL structure? SBSEO friendly. See, it used to be a uh, question mark P equals this, you know, whatever, all kinds of fancy little symbols in the URL bar. So I was like, okay, let's mod rewrite the URLs. And keep in mind, I was a high authority. Google loved me, had tons of trust in me. I was first place for the most competitive, for one, two, and three, it would jump up around for the most competitive term in the industry, which was MySpace layouts getting, thou it was bringing me probably 60,000 visits a day, that term, just that term alone, not MySpace codes, not MySpace generators, just MySpace layouts. So I decided to redo the URL structure using Mod Rewrite with Apache and pretty up the URLs. Yeah, because they because that's what all the search engine optimization experts tell you to do, and in most cases this makes a lot of sense. They say it sense. make it so that that humans and computers can understand it, so that the URLs are more descriptive. So if you go over to MySpaceSupport.com/slash uh, Pooh Bear Design, you can see it. So that it's almost like a sentence packed with the keywords that you want to rank exactly. for, separated by dashes, no question marks and funny characters and all kinds of things yeah, it, that only it, computers understand. It helps your SEO just a little bit, you know, when you type in the keywords in Google, it's also in your title and URL bar. But um, that didn't help in this case. Do you want me to explain yeah, what, what happened there? I found this out after, of course. When we did that, instantaneously, I think. The next day, I was page eight. You know, we launched the new version of Miami. I got home, got on Google, and I was like, where the fuck am I? I was flipping out because that was like 50% of my traffic. And then I, I'm going through the pages, and I'm like, I'm page eight, I'm like, what's going on? I hire an SEO consultant for 300 bucks an hour to teach me some stuff. He basically told me, since I was a high authority site, when you do a complete restructure, like, I mean, everything was changed from the graphics to the directories, to the, the URLs, to the CSS code, to the PHP code, to the HTML code everything was completely changed and since I changed it instantaneously like you know I went from the old version straight to the new version in a matter of seconds it's a brand new site to Google your domain loses its trust and therefore I basically started from scratch going all the way to page 8 and having no trust no authority the domain didn't mean anything anymore because it's brand new now Andrew, so my stomach hurts as I hear this this is like overnight yeah so I lost everything overnight, and oh. it was me trying to make it better. And doing the so. responsible thing. You're saying to yourself, I'm not going to go buy another car, another truck. I'm going to reinvest in my business. What's the smartest thing to do to reinvest in my business is to say, my traffic's coming from Google. I'll help Google even further and grow my business that way. Yeah. Wow. So, so how did you feel after that? Well, first of all, can you change it then? If you can go, if overnight you can lose it all, can't you overnight go back to the old... I went through a buy sell text link place and you could buy text links with no follows and you know just get straight up links. I did all kinds of SEO techniques. I don't remember everything I did, but I had a guy who helped me do a lot of stuff. I ended up spending 30 grand, not and that 30 grand was strictly for buying stuff. I didn't even pay for labor. I mean, or cuz I did a lot of the programming myself. I got to like page 5, I think. The best technique you can do to get up in SEO is really buy straight up links. Links is and I mean, there's probably a lot, I'm, I'm a little behind and I know there's the Twitter and the pinging and the blog pinging and the technoratic, all that fancy stuff. I know there's probably other techniques now, but back then it was just buying links or having high authority links link to you and then link back to them. It just was not working. I could not get back to page one, no matter how hard I tried.
and I just kept dropping money into it. So I was like, I can't, I can't do this anymore. I can't keep spending money. It's not working. Eventually, I, I'm getting questions from the audience. If you guys are watching and have questions, if you have knowledge of SEO or have knowledge of, of this space, my space space at all, bring on the questions, bring on the insight. Merrick actually has a great question here. He's asking me to ask you if you redirected your old pages to the new pages before going live with the new site. Yes, that was actually an HT access thing I forgot to do. You can do a redirect. There's a few types of redirects you can do. There's like 301s, 401s, and there's one, there's a redirect you can do in the HT access file that says, hey, this page is gone, not missing, it's over here. We didn't do that, and I didn't figure that out till a month later when it was too late, when the old design, when the old site was already gone. Like, unfortunately, I trashed the old site. I don't know why. I kind of like to have a clean server. I'm OCD when it comes to my files, and you know, I like to have all the folders perfectly prettied out, and so I, I trashed the old site. You know, one of the things that I admire about you is if people see your pictures online, you look like a like a fashion model. Right now, we're just hanging out on, on webcam, but People see your pictures online and you're like a fashion model. Then you start talking and you sound like the biggest geek on the planet with the way that you want to make sure to keep the folders properly organized with the PHP mm -hmm. and the development, the whole thing. So how did you feel? How did I feel? Yeah, you've about... been pretty open about your feelings. I, I love that. That's what makes you feel to me as a writer, as an entrepreneur, as a human being. That's what makes you feel more human to me. So you talked yeah. a little bit about your depression. Did you Did it start to set in at that point? No, it didn't set in until probably a year, uh, almost a year ago, just recently. Yeah, it was, it was, it was rough because not only I, I lost everything, so it was, it was rough. I had to sell everything, and and I, I'm the kind of person who can't ask people for help. I can't let anybody pay for anything. I just. I, I can't even ask my mom for help. I can't ask my dad for help. I can't ask friends for help. I was cashing everything out. Just, I mean, I had to sell my Nintendo Wii. I had to sell my Super Nintendo. I had to sell my video cameras. I had to sell my TVs. I, had to, I sold everything. I even did a garage sale. It was horrible. Yeah, it was, it was rough. Why'd you have to sell it all? Was it to make payments for the house? It was bills, consumer debt, business debt, second mortgage, just Why'd piled. you need to take on business debt if money was coming in? That's still a mystery to me this day. I don't even know why I pulled out a second mortgage. I think I started overspending what came in every month and I locked up some money in a CD so I didn't spend my tax money. And I think, you know, I wanted toys that I couldn't necessarily afford. Like I think the M6, for example, I pulled out a loan for that one because I didn't have a 20, uh, 120K cash. I might have 60K cash and then the rest locked up and the rest spent, you know, 93K down. So I bought my M6 and I pulled out a secured 120K loan, bought that car and then paid off the 120K secured loan, you know, when I got more cash. And I think the same thing happened with pulling out a business loan, pulling out a second mortgage. And then eventually I kind of just overspent what I earned. So I think that's why I'm in debt. Why'd you spend so much? I'm Part of it is, you said earlier, that you love your toys, but take me in the psychology of the moment. I love gadgets and toys and clothes and cars. And I had a consistent for a year and a half, a year to a year and a half, I had 100 to 200 grand coming in every month. So in my eyes, I was on top. I thought I could afford anything and everything. I thought I could, you know, one next year buy a jet and have a Bugatti the next year. So I just kept buying and buying. I mean, I it got habitual. Like, couldn't stop it. I just kept buying stuff and it's still hard. Like I'm, I'm good at like not buying stuff now, but like it was really tough to not buy because it was just, I wanted it, I could have it, so I bought it. Tell me if my thinking on this is accurate. My feeling is that in order to make it to any significant level, to any, to, in order to make it big, whatever big is, this case two million, maybe it's a hundred million, maybe it's a trillion at some point in, in the future. In order to get to some significant level, you have to feel that you deserve to be there. You have to feel that you were made and put on this earth to get to that financial level. And once you're there, it reinforces the belief that you had in the beginning, that you deserve to be there, that you're, that you're smart enough, that you're put on this earth to be at that level. And so you never think that you're gonna lose it because, hey, I always thought I deserved to be here. My feeling that I deserve to be here, that I deserve to be rich, is validated by where I am. Why would I ever lose it? I have a belief that's uh, validated by reality. And so I'm going to keep yeah. expecting this to happen. Yeah, I believe everybody should live in abundance. I don't think anybody should, you know, I'm happy with where I am. I, I live below my means. I'm frugal. I don't think, I mean, I would never, ever be able to see at that point of view, and I never will ever. I think life should be abundant and you should have what people are putting out. I mean, if people are putting out yachts and jets and Bugattis, fuck, I want it. You know, like, I think life should be fun. 
and you know enjoy life play with the toys you know fall in love have an island do what you want and i think everybody should have abundance so i'm greedy stubborn or not greedy i've always been, i'm not greedy at all i help everybody but i mean i am stubborn i i want to live in abundance for sure and i've always had that belief all right let's see what a couple of people here are saying there's just a little confusion here when when you explain that you that you didn't redirect in time merrick responded by saying yeah that's the reason why you lost why you lost your position in google and then everything i do on twitter is the handle is asking why couldn't you revert to the old site you deleted it and yeah he's saying he deleted it but also it was too late to revert by that point it was a brand new site to google right and if if you would have gone back to the new to the old site, it would have been another site still. Yeah, that's and I think even if I would have had the old site and reverted a month later, I think it would have just probably put me back even farther because they they would have already indexed all. I mean, I was doing you know 100 200,000 visits a day. They've already indexed my brand new site probably that day. So going back to the old one would have just been re-indexing. So all right, I want to thank Saad Malik for helping us connect. By the way, how do you know him? Through the MySpace industry, I believe we just been taught. We have been chatting just randomly over the years and you know he's always been a, a supportive guy and anytime he had questions or I had questions it's you know we're just in general just nice aim buddies I thank Saad as well for giving me this interview getting me this interview it was about I think you said and it's hard to count it's hard to go back and count every penny but from what I understand it's about 2.1 million that you made you had expenses relevant expenses of about 1.1 million something like that yeah I, I narrowed it down in a blog I kind of like went through a thought process, but the imperative expenses, which I think was close to a mil or 900,000 to a million-ish dollars, mortgage, bills, that, taxes. That, that's what was left after you paid your taxes, that's what was left after you paid your regular business expenses, and that's what you used to spend on the BMW and everything else. Yeah, so I think I was left with about a million cash all in after expenses. And that's what you used to spend for, yeah. for life? Yep. Okay. All right. Okay. Mon Monzonito is asking what happened to the site. What happened to myspacesupport.com at the end of the show? Okay. Story? There's actually, I left out a big part, a really big part, since I don't know if you're on a time thing, but I'll, I'll make it quick. I had another partner that wanted to work with me and I was doing humor sites as well. I forgot to tell you that. I was doing humor sites. I would upload videos, submit them to places, you know, like e -bombs World. Before yep. there was YouTube, we did humor sites and I would make 10, 20 bucks a day off these ones. This kid, he wanted to get into the MySpace thing with me and he owns, I don't know if he still owns it, myspacegeeks.com. His name is Kyle, I believe, and he actually sabotaged me. He had access to my server, I trusted him. He downloaded my entire site, and this is why the market got so saturated so quick. Downloaded my site, zipped it up, themed it with a different skin, and started selling it on SitePoint and eBay. So he screwed me big. MySpace Geeks is a thief, and he always, I'm, I hate, I'm sorry to like call somebody out like that, but he saturated the market like nobody's business and I mean he was selling it for I think I mean 20 50 100 bucks and there was so many MySpace clone sites identical copies of mine it was just a different theme and there was nothing I can't copyright MySpace layouts I mean it, it, doing any type of copyright things with intellectual property especially based off somebody else's website myspace.com there's nothing I could do he was a young kid in Australia I couldn't even sue him if I wanted to and this uh. was in the beginning before I had money. I used to listen to Howard Stern as a kid and whenever anyone said something like that on the Howard Stern show, he would say, whoa, wait a minute, I don't want to get sued here. Let's not let's not libel anyone. And I, I don't want to do that. If Howard Stern, who takes all these crazy risks with what he says, wouldn't allow that, so uh, I, I shouldn't either. I want to be careful not to accuse somebody. I don't know what he did or what he didn't do. I don't know if maybe somebody set him up, for example, but bottom line, what you're telling me is your stuff was put out there and anyone My could have a copy. My stuff was put out there by somebody from someone and resold and then the market was saturated within a month. I and see. So then anyone who wanted to, if uh, the end users, if they Googled for MySpace layouts would now have way too many options to pick from and you guys were all splitting that market up. Yep. Okay. All right. Wow. I and didn't know that. But then that what up. happened to the site at the end for you? So at the end, I think I sold it 2008 of April. It just kept going downhill that entire year. just kept getting worse. Started to kind of lose hope on it. Started venturing out in other things, trying to figure out other things. And I tried to get into affiliate marketing. Running affiliate ads on your site. No, just landing pages. I was trying to like sell green tea, sell uh, diet pills, do all kinds of affiliate marketing. And I tried to get into that and I'd follow a whole bunch of blogs and read what they would say. I couldn't get affiliate marketing to profit for me. So I lost a little bit of money there. I don't know why. Sometimes I'd break even. 
but you know, I was trying that, gave up on my space support because I couldn't get to get it to go up and I ended up selling it. And it was at that time, I think I was doing, it was doing 3000. It went all the way down to 160 the next month, 50, 40, 30. And I think I got down all the way to $5,000 a month with the site. And I was like, okay, time to sell it. I sold it in time and I sold it for $75,000. And around that same time, I sold my clothing company I started, which I never really got going, so it's not worth a discussion, but I did make a profit off of it. I sold it for $25,000. So I walked with 100 less commission. The attorney charged me 20-ish, maybe a little less. I sold it in 2008, April, I believe. Okay, so what you have now is the house. I'm yes. Else. I have the house, a TV, and a couch that I'm on. No, um, but I have started something else when we get into that, that's doing, getting there. But yeah, sold everything. What are some of the things that, that you learned from it? I'll, tell, I'll start you off and say what I learned from this. First of all, whenever something goes big, you gotta jump on it right away. Not be the, the millionth person to pile in, but be one of the first people to see the opportunity that MySpace is going big and jump in on it and, and find a way to ride it. Yep. You did that, Peter Pham's company, the company you worked for, Photo Bucket did that with MySpace and many others did too. So that's something that I learned. What else did you learn from, from this experience? Um, yeah, it definitely is about catching the wave and trying to time things and finding the trends. That is, I mean, that's always, always going to help you for the better. I mean, it's definitely something I learned. What I definitely did learn is, unfortunately, after I lost my money, I read the entire Rich Dad series about investing. By Robert Kiyosaki, the Rich Dad Yeah, and I, I love Robert Kiyosaki because his story is, you know, he's basically, he lost his millions, slept in his car with his girlfriend, made it back to the top. You know, simple success story, but he's really inspiring. And I learned about investing, you know, and obviously now I know not to foolishly spend and not be so compulsive, impulsive and whatever. And I know where I want to go and I know what I'm going to do. Now I know how to do it. So, I mean, I learned a big lesson about life, money, people, for sure, relationships. I learned a lot in, the biz in a business sense too. I mean, I've been reading, I've read probably since I lost all my money, easily 20 books strictly on business and stocks and finance and real estate. How many years has it been since then? It started to really get downhill and like, you know, I started to get really tight on funds. I lost it all just last year, a little, maybe a little less than last year. So let's say this, what age were you when you when you created MySpaceSupport.com? I believe it was 2005. I think I was 18. I want to say I was 18, barely 18, just then, turned 18. And the, the year that you, the age when you sold it? It's 2009, last year I was, 21, so I think it was right before I turned 21. Okay, so you were 20 years old, and the age when you made your first million? I was 18 by the time I've accumulated a total of a million, because I think I was had to have been like 18, borderline maybe 19, but I, I got a million quick because the checks were coming in every month. And you consider yourself a hacker, a developer, right? Not a hacker by any means, but a, a developer, yes. Okay, all right, so people are asking us, who are watching us live, including everything I do, what are you up to now? I moved to LA for a year. I came back here, sold the site in May, so I kind of moved out here right after I sold the site, or April, sold the site in April, moved out here in August. Jumped into an, another relationship right away. That didn't help my situation, but my partner and I, I have a good friend that I met through an investor, a really good friend, my bet he's the one running around in the background. Jamie Jones, Jamie Glamour. I met him through actual an investment deal that him, his, him and his father and I almost did that didn't go through. He's an entrepreneur himself and he's always wanted to do something with me. So we sat down, we brainstormed, we came up with B model. With what? Say, let's say I know it, but I want to make sure that everyone else knows it. It's B model.com. B E model. model.com. We'll pick up the letter B model.com soon too. And what, so what is bmodel.com? What's the premise of the site? It's, it's, a, it's a social networking site for the industry of photography, modeling, and styling. And it's a really, really big industry and there's money in it. There's a lot of money in the industry. Every girl wants to look pretty on camera. Every photographer wants to shoot half-naked girls. Every guy wants to be a photographer and shoot girls. Well, not every guy, but I mean a, a substantial amount. And modeling and photography is it's really big. and. Our top competitor is uh, doing very well, and there's only one competitor. And so we came up with this idea, and we raised a small investment in the beginning, $20,000, from his father, who was the initial investor that I was going to work with a long time ago. You know, we worked our butt off. We did the site mapping, projections, expenses, all that fancy stuff. We got it ready, convinced his dad probably within a month. And then ever since that, him and I became best friends. I mean, for the last year, him and I have been like working 
side by side 24 7 and we hired a, a foreign company to do the site to try to save money a foreign um, outside of the country company uh -huh. yes in india so i would work with them every single night from 11 p.m till 8 in the morning so i was on a nocturnal schedule for about a year and we ran out of money with them. It, nothing went how it was supposed to be. It was hard to communicate. Nothing got done how I wanted it. Nothing got done how Jamie and I saw it. So um, we got our first investment. It took a year. They took 10 months to 11, 10 to 12 months to get it where it is now. We actually got 15,000 users in two days. Database crashed, lost half our users. After that, we're like, okay, we need to redo our site. We need to get this to a better level. We have so many innovative technologies and features that we're gonna implement, but we just don't have the money. This is when Jamie and I started busting our ass off just approximately four months ago. We just got a new investor on board. So it was actually from my blog, surprisingly. Jamie and I have been networking like crazy. I mean, through his dad's connections, through my family's connections, through my friends' connections, and all my good connections were through a few of my friends, but they never went through. So I was I was trying to figure out a way, okay, Jamie, we're not gonna be able to we can't fix B model. I'm three years rusty at PHP. I can't dig in the Indian code and fix this, so we need to we need to get some money. You said so you need to figure something out, and so what'd you figure out? So we needed to figure out a way to get an investor because I couldn't fix the site myself. I'm three years rusty of programming. I mean, I could barely do Ajax technology now because it's so new. I mean, I haven't really messed with Ajax. I decided to blog about it just recently saying we're searching for investors. And we just closed last night, got our first check. I mean, things are going great. We just raised $75,000 for this company, cash, one investor. And if things go well, he's going to give us more money. And we still have two other investors who are actually looking to give us $200,000. So things right now are starting to to definitely pick up because now we've got a total investment in this company of $95,000 with another potential $200,000. We're gonna take B model to a, a great level, a very, very high level. How did you get 15,000 users in two days? Or did you say 14,000, um, whatever it was, how'd you get it in two days? Okay, so how I did that probably um, is not the best way to do business, but it works. There's a whole bunch of competitors out there. So what we would do is I, I built a script that would uh, pick up users off all the competitors. So I'd have a list and I, I actually I used curl. It's a PHP command where you can actually scrape data from every single user. And what I would do is I'd get a really big user list of every single user in existence. And I mean, it took a week to scrape everybody. And I mean, it's not bad by any means. It's just, it's it's like a, a method of direct advertising, so to speak. I would get in touch with them and I would send them messages, emails. What I would do is I would regulate it by thousands per day. So what I would do is I would have the script do a hundred per minute. And then I would end up getting up to 15,000. So what I would do is I'd send the messages saying, hey, you need to expand your portfolio. We have great options here check out us and it worked magnificently so that's what we did <laughs> hi that's great so I, I think I heard that MySpace did the same thing I, I did an interview with oh, I forget the name of the author the, the woman who wrote stealing MySpace the biography of MySpace as a company and I think she said that MySpace did pretty much the same thing with Friendster that they went out there and they grabbed their their best users and it sounds like that's what you did here yeah, and I mean, uh, with Facebook and Twitter now, I've, I've been in the social networking thing now. Now that we have money to actually create the technology, I have some awesome techniques of how we're going to uh But isn't get... it harder now? Because now they're quicker to jump on this. MySpace took too long to jump on the whoring and to jump on the, to jump on the spammers. But today, Twitter's quicker about it. In fact, Twitter has a spam button. It took them a while to do it. They have the spam button now, and they're still a young company. Yeah. And before they had the spam button, there's still ways for them to jump on people. Facebook also jumps on spam pretty quickly. Yeah, no, um, we're not. it's not spamming what we're going to do. We're going to build a big list. Like, you know, you have 14,000 followers. What we're going to do is we're going to find everybody with the keyword photo shoot model. You know what I mean? We're going to we're gonna build a list, and we're going to do it the right way. We're not going to spam and mass blast everybody. I mean, that's not what we're going to do. We're going to actually legitimately build a solid fan base Twitter base we're gonna build Facebook applications we're gonna build um, all kinds of technologies that's gonna bring us users that we can message and get them to sign up it's gonna be just a, a form of direct advertising but not like hey come over here hey come over here you know it's not gonna be spamming like that I mean all but. right well I, I'd like to do another interview after you use these methods and gotten some results and talk to you about what you did when it's safe okay all right so for now I think we've covered a lot here. We covered the rise, we covered the challenges, we covered what you're up to now. 
thank you guys all for watching. As always, I want to know your feedback on this interview. I want to know who else you think I should be interviewing.